then, uh, sometime later, um, I don't know how we heard about it, but Marcello Trutzi, who mm -hmm. I knew nothing about, we didn't know we didn't anything about it, call, uh, contacted us and said, look, he heard about our group and he'd like to join if he could and he could help us out, you know, because he has a, he's a good administrator, he'd be willing to do all the scut work for us. And the one thing that Martin, Randy, and I did not have, and he, we did have no administrative abilities. We didn't know how to run anything. We just had the, we were good idea people. <laughs> we spent all the time just thinking of ideas what to do, but we weren't and, able to. And Trutzi, as an academic, wanted to help he offered, provide some structure to Exactly. The, and to we said, that's what we need. So we said, okay. And uh, so Trutzi became part of our group. And then the next thing happened is Trutzi met uh, Paul Kurtz in 1976 right. at some conference. I don't know what it was. And they both, at that time, Kurtz was running the Humanist magazine, and he was had also been running articles, including my, by myself, on critical of paranormal stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so PSYCOP was originally kind of a subcommittee of the American Humanist Association or something? It, or Well, no, we, yeah. we, we, we tried to make it clear that we weren't going to be connected, and that's been the point of friction ever since. Yeah, the split. Yeah. Uh, but um, what happened was that he, without asking Martin, Randy, or myself, Marcelli vol uh, Marcello volunteered to pull, to, to Put us together with uh, uh, Kurtz and his group, and we'd form this big group called Psychop. And so we had a big meeting in '76, and mm -hmm. that's how Ralph started. Mm -hmm. So the reason I asked the movement question is that in recent years you've been speaking out more, suggesting to audiences that some of the approaches of Oh, the expert critics of parapsychology, some of your approaches may have been misguided. Again, don't want to put words in your mouth, but you've suggested that, uh, conversations we've had. Maybe that, uh, um, you know, some of the previous approaches to criticizing parapsychology are, are uh, there, there could be a better way to do it. So the reason I asked the movement question is that here's a young, uh, you know, every, we have so many new generations of people who hold you up and Randy and Gardner and others kind of as skeptic heroes, as role models, and they want to emulate your approach. They want to do what you've done and kind of continue to carry on the torch. If you're saying it might not have been the best way to go about it, well, what's, what, how, what, what do you have to say to them who say, I want to, I wanna, in a fair-minded way, look at parapsychology research, say, and uh, and see if it's up to scientific standards. Well, in 1986, I wrote this um, article called Proper Criticism, and it's been the most uh, repeatedly published article I've ever written. Mm -hmm. It's been every skeptics group in the world has republished it, it's been republished again. It's now it's going to be republished in a commemorative issue of the skeptical movement by the British journal The Skeptic. And, uh, so it's also been published in books and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And all it is, my article on proper criticism, is just a, ma just a list of platitudes that you should know. If you're attacking someone, don't attack the person, attack the problem. Right. And, uh, and be reasonable and be fair, be sensible. That's about it. It's about, about, about a bunch of little platitudes like that. Yet it's been the most published thing. Everyone reads it, everyone praises it, and no one follows it, mm. <laughs> including myself. Mm. <laughs> So, but what I'm trying to zone in on is if the approaches that the skeptics movement or leading skeptics have taken in the past, if it might not be the ideal way, what's the alternative? In other words, what, uh, what's next for the skeptics movement? If, if, you, if you're suggesting the answer is not for expert critics to invest 50 years in, 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 and whole academic careers into, in a fair-minded way, looking at the parapsychological research, well, what's the alternative? Well, first of all, I don't know, but uh, I do have ideas. Uh, <laughs> one thing uh, I'm going to correct now, a chance to do it, Curtis is introducing me. By the way, there's some wrong stuff also. People get information on me off the web when they write, wrote about me in this pamphlet that you have the, the program and so on. Some of it's true, <laughs> uh, some of it is not quite true. He said I'm on the uh, executive council. I was on, I was right from the beginning, I was on the executive council, but I think for the last five years I've not been on the executive mm. council, and uh, I've had nothing to do with PSYCOP, not deliberately. I think it's because we have some... F some strategic differences, maybe. <laughs> well, I'm not even sure it's that. Uh, they have differences with me. I don't have differences with them, <laughs> uh, but okay. Uh, but 
to me, uh, the skeptics movement, one of the big things we had uh, was allocation of resources. I've always been saying you've got to live within your resources, not because I'm a Republican, I'm not, I'm a Democrat, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, I do think we ought, it's, that we ought to use our limited resources. At that time when we started Psych Up, we did have limited resources. We ought to use them wisely and most effectively. And I thought we got the most bang for the buck by focusing on not trying to get to everyone in the world, but focusing on opinion makers, mm -hmm. journalists and teachers, educators. If we could influence those people and help them, we're going to have the biggest audience. The other thing I thought was we were doing the most was with the skeptical inquirer. We were mm -hmm. reaching the most. Mm -hmm. However, uh, Kurtz and the other powers there somehow were more, and you used the term, I thought it was great, edifice uh, complex. Yeah, Quote, <laughs> quoting me in front of an audience, great thing to say, but yes, I've uh, cheekily introduced Paul Kurtz a number of times as our man with an edifice complex, wants well, to well, build uh, yeah. an organization. So, yeah. so, Buildings. so, so they yeah. keep multiplying these centers all over mm -hmm. the world. And they're very expensive. Mm -hmm. they, they have to raise money and so on. So they're always raising fundraising and so on. And, and that's become more what the skeptics, and they, two things. The skeptics movement, since it's developed, Psychop, has focused more on things like building centers, spreading out, and also fighting among themselves within skeptics. Mm -hmm. And they've mm -hmm. done nothing about trying to re do the outreach, mm -hmm. which is what we're, where we have our, we can do the most. Okay, which and is that, what? that's one thing I have disagreed with uh, people right from the beginning. It's, 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 ta uh, one likes to build buildings and, and, uh, and raise money, and mm -hmm. the other likes to do something that's effective. And, and so that's a, just a d difference of opinion. I, I think your criticism about building buildings, that's well taken. People get that. But you're drawing another distinction. You're saying rather than skeptics being geared up to engage the parapsychologist and look at the research and really dig in, rather than that, the agenda should be an outreach or public education mission, opinion leaders, journalists, teachers. Um, that's what you've done, surely, your public appearances, your appearances in the media, but you've also spent the, 50, the last 50 years doing the hard research, looking, or at least looking at the research to see if it's up to snuff. And I'm just trying to pin you down on this. Are you suggesting that that should be less of a priority for the skeptics movement than this public education, this public outreach? I don't know how to answer that because... I would say my focus is not uh, paranormal or anything like that, ultimately. What I'm co most concerned about is getting, giving people the tools to think mm. and to be, be good, better thinkers. So it's and, affirmative. And somehow yeah. our education system, the, we're, we've not done a good job of that. I think we can do better. And to me, skepticism you know, and the skeptical movement, uh, dealing with the parapsychology, is just a good a forum to... to work on those, those kinds of problems. If we can do it there, then we could do it elsewhere as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And it's going to involve science, it's going to involve knowledge of thinking, you know, critical thinking, uh, it's going to involve the things we, 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 we like to pride ourselves on, and understanding the psychology of it all as mm -hmm. well. We've got to realize that uh, humans, hu what human limitations are and what it is that is pushing people in this direction. Mm -hmm. And uh, so my feeling is that we've got to do more in that that direction and, and skepticism is just one tool for that. Mm. Please join me in thanking uh, Ray Hyman for this fun conversation. Thank you. Ray.